We're going to start out with uh, chapter 16, section 9. We're just going to do the first half for this particular lesson. And the topic is Kramer's rule. And it's yet another way to solve two equations with two variables. Again, this is part of Algebra 2, Standard 2. We solve two equations, two variables by graphing, by substitution, by linear combination at the beginning of the year. Now again, uh, we have been working toward learning how to find determinants of matrices. Now that we've done that, today's objective is to put those determinants to work with something called Kramer's Rule and actually find the solutions to these two by two equations. And we're actually now finally covering everything there is to uh, the standard two. So Kramer's rule, we're going to start out simple in this particular lesson. It's two equations, two variables. And it's important that we line everything up. So some coefficient a times x plus some coefficient b times y equals some constant c. Our second equation is some coefficient d times x plus another coefficient e times y equals another constant f. It's important that we have the x's lined up in position, the y's lined up in position, the constants by themselves. And I put the constants in another color to emphasize that we're going to do something with those constants. To calculate, we're going to need three 2 by 2 matrices. The first one is going to represent a denominator of a fraction. The second matrix will represent the numerator of x in our fraction. And the third will represent the numerator of y in a fraction. Simplify those fractions and we'll get our answers. So here's how we start. To find the determinant of the denominator, we need a 2 by 2 matrix. The 2 by 2 matrix is found by taking the coefficients of x and y in both equations. So a, b, d, e. a, b, d, e. And that, when we find the determinant of that 2 by 2 matrix, will give us a denominator of our answer. Secondly, you notice I've color-coded the constants in blue. When we're looking for the numerator of x, what we do is we take the x coefficients, which were a and d, and we replace them with the constants c and f. And we're going to continue that pattern as we look for the numerator of y. So here, for the numerator of y, we're going to take the y coefficients, which were b and e. We'll scroll back and show you b and e. We're going to replace them with the constants c and f. When we find these three determinants of those 2 by 2 matrix, we'll put them together to get our answer now, some books will write them in this format. Here's our determinant of the numerator of x. Here was our determinant of our denominator. Here's our determinant of the numerator of y. And here's our determinant of the denominator. Now, some of you may choose just to leave it in this notation as a reminder. That's how we're going to find our x and y value. Again, we don't expect you to memorize the letters, but the process. So let's look at a numerical example and put that formula to work. Our system of simultaneous equation is 2x plus 5y equals 7, 4x minus 2y equals negative 3. I've lined up my x's and their coefficients, the y's and their coefficients. Constants, again, I'm color coding them in blue. Let's find the determinants of the denominator. And that comes from a 2 by 2 matrix, the coefficient of x and y, the coefficient of x and y. So 2 and 5, 4 and negative 2. Now let's go ahead and find out what this number is. Remember, for a 2 by 2 matrix, we multiply the diagonal going down, 2 times negative 2. We subtract the product of the diagonal going up, 4 times 5. Simplifying that, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 4 times 5, we're subtracting a positive 20. And that gives us negative 24 for our denominator. All right, now let's take a look at the numerator of x. Remember, to find the numerator of x, we're going to take the x coefficients, 2 and 4, replace them with the constants, 7 and negative 3. Let's find that determinant. Multiply the diagonal going down, so 7 times negative 2. Subtract the product of the diagonal going up, negative 3 times 5. Simplifying, 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. 
Subtracting a negative 3 times 5, subtracting a negative 15 is adding a 15. And negative 14 plus 15 is 1. For our numerator of y, we are going to replace the y coefficients 5 and 2 with the constants 7, negative 3. Let me scroll up so we can see it all. So we're replacing the 5, negative 2 for the y coefficients with the constant 7, negative 3. Let's calculate that determinant. Multiply the diagonal going down, 2 times negative 3. Subtract the product of the diagonal going up, 4 times 7. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 4 times 7 is 28, and we are subtracting. And negative 6 minus 28 is negative 34. Now, I've put squares around these numbers. For those of us used to circling our answer, they're not our answers yet, but they're portions of our answers. So we're going to put them together where 24 is the denominator. Now, I know it's negative 24, and here I have positive. And the numerator of x is 1. We like to, whenever we have a fraction, get the negative out of the denominator, put it in the numerator. So instead of writing it as positive 1 over negative 24, if we multiply numerator and denominator by negative 1 in our heads, we'll get negative 1 over positive 24. Then, for our answer for y, our denominator was still negative 24. Our numerator of x is negative 34. Negative divided by negative is positive. 34 divided by 24 reduces to 17 twelfths. So our solution, and let me again remind you before we actually look at that closely, if you were to solve these two using substitution, elimination, linear combination, graphing, let's think of graphing for a moment, those two lines would intersect at the point negative 1 24th and 17 12 So no matter what method you use to solve the system of equations, you're going to get the same answer. Now I'd like to remind you some vocabulary from earlier in the year. If there was an answer, we said the system was consistent. And if the answer was one point, which we have one point here, an ordered pair, we said that that system of simultaneous equations was independent. So that's the process now of solving systems of simultaneous equations. Earlier in the year, we graphed, did substitution, did linear combination. Now this method, using determinants of matrices, is called Kramer's Rule. Let's look at another example. It always takes a couple to catch on. So here's another system we're going to solve. 2x minus y equals 6. 3x plus 5y equals 22. Let's find the determinant of the denominator. We're going to take the coefficients of x and y. So 2 and negative 1, 3 and 5. Let's go through the process of finding that determinant. So multiply the diagonal going down, 2 times 5. Subtract the product of the diagonal going up, 3 times negative 1. 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. But subtracting a negative 3 is adding a positive 3. 10 and 3 is 13, and that's our denominator. For the numerator of x, just like in the previous example, we're going to replace the x coefficients, 2 and 3, with the constants, 6 and 22. So let's multiply the diagonal going down, 6 times 5. Let's subtract the diagonal going up, 22 times negative 1. Simplify, 6 times 5 is 30. <coughs> Excuse me. And 22 times negative 1 is a negative 22. Subtracting a negative 22 is the same as adding a positive 22. So 52 is our solution. Not actually our solution, but the numerator of x. For the numerator of y, we're going to replace the y coefficients, negative 1, 5, with the constants, 6 and 22. Let's find that determinant. Multiply the diagonal going down, 2 times 22. Subtract the product of the diagonal going up, 3 times 6. Simplifying that, 2 times 22 is 44. 3 times 6 is 18. We subtract and get 26. So let's put these three pieces of the puzzle together, our denominator, our numerator of x, our numerator of y. 
So for x value of my ordered pair, because two equations, two values, we need two parts to our answer, an x and a y. I'm going to take the numerator of x, 52, over the denominator, 13, and that reduces to 4. Then for the y value of my xy ordered pair, we're going to take the numerator of y, 26, over the denominator, which was 13. 26 divided by 13 is 2. So our ordered pair is the point 4, 2. Now, again, the vocabulary from earlier in the year. We have a solution, so it's consistent. Since my solution is one point, it's independent. Now, for two, you might argue the fact that, yes, this particular equation might have been, system of equations might have been solved easier using substitution. Get y by itself and substitute. But let me refer you back to the answer we got in our first example. In this situation, we really didn't deal with fractions at all. If you recall graphing, how can you decide when the two lines intersect if they're really intersecting at negative 124th or negative 125th or negative 123rd? If we did substitution or linear combination, we would eventually have to substitute a fraction in and work with that. So for Kramer's rule, one nice advantage is the only thing we do with a fraction is reduce it at the end which is a lot easier than working with that fraction all the way through the system. Now, I know it's been a long time, so let me remind you, if there is no solution, it's called inconsistent. So far, both of these had solutions. They were consistent. They were one point. They were independent. So if you recall earlier in the year, what happens when the two lines were parallel? That was inconsistent. What if the two lines were the same line, they had an infinite number of solutions, and they were consistent, dependent? How can we decide if it's inconsistent or dependent when we're using Kramer's rule? And here is the test I would suggest you use. If the determinant of the denominator you get is 0, and the determinant of the numerator of y is not 0, the equations are inconsistent, which means if you were to graph them, those two lines would be parallel to each other. Well, what if they're the same line? Well, you'll discover that if the determinant of the denominator is 0 and the determinant of the numerator of y is 0, then there is a solution. There's an infinite number of them. They're consistent. And they're the same line. They're dependent. So in Kramer's rule, if you get a solution, it's a nice ordered pair, consistent independent. If the denominator of is 0 and the numerator of y is not 0, they're parallel lines and inconsistent. And if the denominator is 0 and the numerator of y is 0, they're the same line, consistent dependent. Now that's it for uh, chapter 16, section 9, part 1. We're dealing with two equations, two variables. In the next installment, chapter 16, uh, section 9, part 2, we're going to do the same process with three equations, three variables.